Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 142 we'll talk about request reply messaging versus async notification, a different kind of request reply model. You can get a listing of all of my lessons in Software Architecture Monday from my website developer2architect.com lessons or just go to my website and press on the lessons link. Now as most of you know um, most of the material uh, that I do for Software Architecture Monday does come from uh, the two books that I wrote with Neil Ford recently, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. However, as I mentioned in the last lesson, sometimes the material comes from questions in the field. And as a matter of fact, that's what the content of this video is about. A question that I received regarding request reply processing, and I wanted to show you that. Now, way back in lesson one, the very first lesson I did in Software Architecture Monday to kind of kick off the website, I did talk about request reply processing and messaging, the mechanisms of kind of how it works and different models within there using either temporary queues or a correlation ID. I wanted to now in this video expand on that to talk about two different techniques or models for request reply processing. And the two models are request reply or async notification. And I wanted to show you the differences between those as well as the implications and consequences and when you should use each model. So let's talk about request reply messaging first. And this is kind of a summary of what I was talking about in lesson one. Uh, let's say we have an order placement service and a payment service. Now, in this case, payment's required at the time of an order, so I've got a message channel in between these two. Now, a customer is going to go place an order, and here's what happens with request reply messaging. So the customer places the order, uh, order placement does what it needs to do, and needs to apply the payment. So it sends a message over to the payment service on a single channel and now sits and waits on that same channel for that payment to be applied. And so the payment does what it needs to do, responds back through that other message channel, and then I respond back to the customer saying, thank you for your order. And this is an example of the use of request reply messaging. So because I say there's a single channel, it's the same message channel, but really it is in the form of two different queues that we use for request reply. A request queue that I send a request on and a reply queue that I wait based on, like for example, a correlation ID. Now a couple of things about request reply messaging. First, I want to emphasize that this is a single message channel. I happen to divide it between two queues, which is normally the practice in request reply messaging, and then wait and start filtering on that reply queue. It's a little more effective than having one single queue, but the emphasis is it's still a single message or event channel. Now, the other significant thing about request reply messaging is that eventually, now I could do, as a matter of fact, right in between when I send the message, Right here, I can do all sorts of other processing, but eventually I do have to wait for that reply to come back to say, was the payment applied? So the point is, I do have to wait for that. And when I say I, meaning the customer or the order placement service has to wait for that reply to come in. Now, the third aspect or consequence of request reply messaging is in fact that the services are tightly coupled to each other because order placement has a dependency on payment service in order to complete that business request. So this is request reply messaging. So what is async notification in that case? And is there a difference between the two? And in fact, there is. And let me show you the topology of async notification when we do request reply. So this is still a form of request reply processing, only watch the difference with this topology. This is titled async notification. So here 
instead of just one event or message channel, I in fact have two separate event channels. Now here's how the processing would work. Now in this kind of model, payment is not required when placing an order, but I want to make sure that the payment starts getting applied. So watch what happens. So I place an order, order placement services, okay, I need to pay for it. So it sends an asynchronous message through the first event channel to payment. But then watch what happens on the slide here. This is interesting. But I don't have to wait for payment to be applied. Now I tell the customer, you're all set. In other words, thank you for your order. Now at some point in the future, maybe a couple of milliseconds, maybe a couple of hours later, the payment gets applied and notifies the order placement service that the payment is successful or maybe not. And then the order placement service in turn now can start the order processing and sends another event or a message to, let's say, decrement the inventory, start to fulfill the, the order, uh, those kind of actions. But notice it held off until payment was applied. So this is a form of async notification. And notice the three differences. First, these are separate message channels. As a matter of fact, each message channel obviously has a queue associated with it, uh, but only a single queue, not a request reply. So this is a single queue that it has. The most significant aspect of async notification is that the business request, even though I sent something out and I need some response back before we can continue, the customer in this case doesn't have to wait for that return from payment before I let the customer know they're all set. Now, if payment wasn't applied, I'd have to notify the customer probably through email or something like that. But the point being that the business request is not held up. Regardless of what I'm doing, if I'm triggering events, if I'm sending other messages, if I'm notifying customers, I don't have to wait for payment to finish. And the third aspect, which is also significant between these two models, is in fact that these services are loosely coupled. I have no dependency on the payment service at all. As a matter of fact, keep in mind what I'm doing, let me get my drawing tool here, is I am sending a message, fire and forget, to a queue. So if payment service happens to be down right here, for example, uh, the payment will be applied at some point, but the point is that message is on the queue. So I am really decoupled from that payment service. Once the payment service does become available, like there, <laughs> it then sends the message back here. And the nice thing is I don't have to be available because that payment information is in the queue, persisted, waiting for me to come back up. And so there's no real dependency other than the contract between these two services. So you can see, in fact, that there is really a difference between request reply and async notification. As a matter of fact, with request reply, the kind of use cases that you would utilize this for are when you need to require data from other services in order to complete your business request. I can do asynchronous sends to notify you I need information, but at some point I have to sit here and wait for it before I can complete. And that's the nature of request reply processing. But async notification notice has separate event channels or message channels, where in fact the use case here is I'm sending you some information or I need some data from you, but I can still finish up processing here, but eventually I need that data so that I can continue other actions I need. But the customer is not waiting. That original business request is done. And that's the nature of what's called async notification. And so uh, usually when we talk about features and promises, uh, they're the same kind of nature. I happen to be using messaging here. But it's whether we have to wait for it to complete, request reply, or notify me at some point that you're done and what the results were from that. 
Okay, so again, this was based on a question I did receive in the field about the differences between whether I should use one channel or two channels and when, and I thought it would be an interesting lesson. I, I like deriving my lessons from questions in the field because I'm sure most of you have those questions as well. And so this has been lesson 142, request reply messaging versus async notification. Uh, stay tuned and two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.